Jim, let's stay on the topic of AEW and Dave Meltzer here. Several listeners sent in something earlier this week, and we have now what he's written in The Observer that has just come out, about Dave talking about Tony Khan being upset with Jack Perry (laughs) for costing him CM Punk. (laughs) And Dave seemingly thinking that Jack Perry's been treated too harshly in the process. Oh, good Lord. From the new issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Regarding Jack Perry, who has now been gone for seven months since the incident with CM Punk at Wembley Stadium, and people thinking he's been fired, he's still under contract, and obviously is working only for New Japan. While my belief is that he should have been punished for doing that line at the Wembley show, which led to the confrontation with CM Punk, and resulted in Punk being fired, but two months should have been long enough. If he, had, <laughs> if he had actually physically started the fight, that would be a different story. Tony Khan has never answered any questions regarding Perry. The way we've heard it was that he was sent home after Wembley and never heard back from Khan. He apologized, uh-huh. kept texting him about he never meant to cause any trouble and was sorry. <sighs> he did hear from the company through lawyers. <laughs> Then they talked, and he apologized to Khan. But he still hasn't been brought back. What they are doing now in Japan is storyline to lead to an eventual return. This is where he showed up in New Japan on their U.S. shows with an armband that said scapegoat. Yes. That's the the only way he'll ever get the goat part attached to his name. That's the story. What are your thoughts on this? Again, (sighs) uh, Dave thinks Jungle Boy was punished too much. Tony Khan, it comes out now, mad at Jungle Boy as he should have been. <laughs> Tony Khan is in the right on that. He's been punished too much, goddammit. Nobody should have to be forced to endure making that kind of money and lifting not one finger to do it. Go into the mailbox and get your fucking check every week while you're living in your house, wherever your fucking house is. Well, I don't know. It's, Maybe if Jungle Boy enjoyed being on the road because he's living in a a fucking treehouse somewhere, but otherwise, what the fuck? Here's the goddamn deal. Tony Khan, as usual, doesn't want to be confrontational and doesn't like it when his toys get mad at him or when he has to get mad at his toys, so he ignores the, the issue and them. He lets his legal staff handle it. We probably know who the fuck that was at that point in time. And probably strumming a guitar, strumming along <laughs> on the old banjo. <laughs> and so what Tony did was they sent him home and they kept paying him because I'm sure Tony got legal advice from his fucked up company. They said, oh, if we fire him because he got fucking front face locked, or he'll sue us, which he probably would have. Maybe he would have. I wouldn't give a fuck if he had, but we'll get to that in a second. So they sent this guy home, and his check has arrived, but he just hadn't had to do anything for it for seven fucking months. And now, maybe he wants to get back in the ring or whatever. Maybe he's made a goddamn enough noise. They well, go to New Japan. We just That way, Tony won't have to fucking see you, because his feelings are hurt, and he don't want to get into this, because he'll quiver and shake and fear for his life. Right? So now, old Jungle Jack off gets to go to New Japan and probably get, maybe he's getting paid by them instead of Tony Khan saying, all right, work for your money. I'm going to book you in New Japan. We haven't heard that's the case. Maybe Tony said, go over there, take their money too. Just, I don't have to deal with it. And, and this shit fly, again, Myself and or anybody ever in the wrestling business in a promotional promoter's position, if an underneath guy went out of his way to start a fucking issue by running his fucking dick liquor on television, on camera, about my top star, fuck him. This is not a goddamn insurance agency. All the people that sell fucking... Etna insurance may be created equal in the eyes of the Etna Corporation. They sit at the same desk at the same size cubicle and they get paid the same money for doing the same thing. 
It don't work that way in wrestling. It don't work that way in the movies. It don't work that way in rock and roll. It don't work that way in professional sports. It don't work that way in show business. What does work is that fucking little prick coming through the goddamn curtain shouldn't have been met by CM Punk. Should have been met by a boss with some balls standing in front of CM Punk who's already said, I'll handle this, Phil. Thank you very much. You, dick lick, you're fucking fired. Who the fuck do you think you are? to goddamn stir this shit up that I've just got settled down or allegedly settled down and my man here is back in the goddamn fold and you're goddamn stirring it up? Get the fuck out of here. Who the fuck do you think you are? And at that point, he can call his goddamn off-brand lawyer if he's got one and try to sue me because I'm a billionaire, allegedly, or at least my father is. And I shouldn't be shaking in my boots at some entitled fucking prick son of a goddamn TV star who thinks he's a wrestler because he hangs out with the fucking cool kids in the locker room, thinks he can put the mouth on the biggest star in my fucking company. And that should have been the end of that. But actually, that would have backfired on CM Punk because he would not then have been free to pursue not only a life of religious freedom, but also big money in a real company, Pinocchio, and be where he is now, making more money, probably selling T-shirts while he recovers from his surgery with less hassle than he would have been over there at the other fucking place doing whatever the fuck he might be doing by now. I rest my case. Well, we will see what happens with Jungle Face Jack Perry in the future.